Motor Week is made possible by Auto Value and Bumper to Bumper and TireRack.com. Well, hello and welcome again to Motor Week 88. We're glad to have you with us. Every now and again, we update you on the progress of GM's reorganization. Well, here's the current news. The GM divisions are at last beginning to take on distinct and separate images. Cadillac is working hard to establish itself as the most prestigious and luxurious of the divisions. Cadillac wants people to once again think of its cars as a reward for years of hard work, indeed as the automotive component of the American dream. To that end, Cadillac has restyled their Eldorado for 1988 and changed a lot of little details. But is the Eldo changed enough to help Cadillac achieve its lofty goal? The answer is yes, and with few reservations, because in reworking the Eldorado, Cadillac will please both the traditional and the not-so-traditional Cadillac buyer. For the traditional buyer, there are lots of subtle cues to remind you of past Eldorados. The fenders are pinched at the top, and the hood has grown an aggressive bulge. The rear gets the same neo-Gothic treatment, and the fender line is now carried into the C-pillar. And while the idea of reliving the past in sheet metal seems hokey to some of us, Cadillac has pulled it off tastefully. Overall, this is a handsome car, and now it's less of a Toronado Riviera look-alike. With the traditionalist presumably pleased, here's what Cadillac's done for the rest of us. The aluminum V8 engine now packs 4.5 liters, opposed to 4.1 last year. Horsepower and torque are both up by about 18%. The numbers are healthy, 155 horsepower and 240 pound-feet of torque. In addition to more displacement, the engine gets lots of internal modifications to reduce friction and improve efficiency. There are also new exhaust and induction systems. Sharp eyes will notice the new valve covers, too. But what we really noticed is the extra power. Our Eldorado covered the quarter mile in 17.3 seconds with a final speed of 79. 0 to 60 took 9.3 seconds. That's a hair faster on both counts than the Oldsmobile and Buick rivals. Power comes on early, and the car pulls very hard from a standstill. But even with all that torque, more than any other front drive make we know of, the steering wheel doesn't try to tear your hands away under hard acceleration. With the new engine, Cadillac has added the electronic torque management devices used in the Cadillac Elante. You might think the Eldo's extra power means 60s style fuel economy. Truth is, the EPA highway rating is down only one mile per gallon from last year. Ratings stand at 17 city, 24 highway. Our test mileage was 21. The engine's extra bang doesn't mean extra boom either. Interior sound was a low 64 decibels at 55. Other changes for the Eldorado include a revised optional touring suspension. The package this year includes larger 15-inch alloy wheels and Goodyear GT Plus 4 all-weather performance tires, plus larger anti-sway bars and higher rate springs than before. The Eldorado is fairly crisp in corners. In fact, the car's cornering ability is far better than the seat's ability to hold the driver in place. The car responds to most turns with mild front-end plow and moderate body roll. The only thing our testers objected to was the imprecise feel in the steering when turning out of a turn and back to center. On a more positive note, the Eldorado is available this year with anti-lock brakes. Our car's stopping distance from 55 was as good as any German coupe, averaging a short 101 feet. The anti-lock pulsation comes on more quickly on the Eldorado than in some other cars with ABS, and the brake pedal seems to rise up, urging you to push as hard as you like. Our only objection is a feeling that the car wants to wander a bit while coming to a stop, but this may have been the result of our test car's low mileage. Inside, things look about the same as they have since the fifth generation Eldorado was introduced for 1986. The dash is traditional Cadillac, upright with square corners. The horizontal striped upholstery is new this year, and it makes the seats look exactly like what they are, too flat. The driver does get standard six-way power adjustment, and this year, for the first time, so does the front passenger. Maybe Cadillac will give us a couple of seat side bolsters next year. Still, anyone can find a comfortable driving position, even if you're not Cadillac's typical 53-year-old Eldorado buyer. 
All often used controls are within easy reach, but depending on the steering wheel position you've chosen, they are sometimes obscured. Instrumentation is digital electronic. It's big and easy to read, and we like the fuel gauge that reads in gallons, but we'd like to have other things to read up here. A multi-duty readout that covers other engine gauges, the trip computer, climate controls, and various system warnings is very informative, but it's too far down on the console for a quick glance or easy operation. Fortunately, the buttons for the standard automatic climate control are higher on the dash. Rear seat passengers get better treatment in the Eldorado this year. The seat frame has been redesigned, and there's an inch more padding in the cushion for better thigh support, and three-point rear belts are now standard. Farther back, the trunk is deep and wide, but with a fairly high liftover. The Cadillac Eldorado will set you back $24,891. Add ABS and a Turing suspension and our test car's other goodies, and the price comes to $28,526. The Cadillac Eldorado hits us just right with distinctive styling, improved acceleration, better rear seat comfort, and optional anti-lock brakes. Misses include front seats that are too flat, an overall illogical dash and instrument layout, and a too high trunk liftover. As for our safety check, our Eldorado passes on all but one count. It does not yet have front passive restraints. For comparison, a Lincoln Mark 7 LSC HO has about the same equipment, but it's faster and less expensive. But the Cadillac is faster and more distinctive than the Buick Riviera or Olds Toronado. It's also the only car among them with a V8. In theory, there are no comparisons. An Eldorado buyer isn't the same as a Riviera buyer, and so on. Well, we don't know if that's true, but we do know the Eldorado is now more attractive to Cadillac lovers and non-Cadillac lovers alike.